Hello, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the directors and advisors of the Academic Parity Movement, I would like to thank to each and every one of you for being here with us today for our second annual conference on academic bullying. As you may know, academic bullying is an age-old issue in our science backyard. Did you even know that Albert Einstein was a target of academic bullying? In fact, a group of 100 authors driven by prejudice wrote against his theories in a book published in 1931. When asked about the book, Einstein said, why 100 authors? If I were wrong, then one would have been enough. I think Einstein was pointing to the issue of ganging up against a person or what is called today academic mobbing. Almost a century later, we in science must still struggle with mobbing issues. Unfortunately, academic bullying has also evolved into a wide spectrum of inappropriate behaviors and actions across various scientific disciplines. Very recent example is allegations of bullying behaviors of Eric Lander, who is a prominent scientist and the former head of the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, Another example is various cases of harassment at Harvard University and the recent lawsuit that claims Harvard's decade-long failure to protect students from harassment and retaliation. Unfortunately, the media reports of academic bullying are generally limited to high-profile perpetrators. Even in these cases, some bullies are protected and keep their positions or even get promoted. Institutional findings of bullying behaviors of many perpetrators remain confidential. In this condition, what targets can do? Why? Fly? Studies show that targets only tolerate the situation and have to deal with serious side effects. Sadly, these side effects are not limited to targets. In fact, the toxic academic environment can affect targets' families and even the scientific integrity and ethics. In this situation where countless targets' voices remain unheard, we established academic parity movement with a simple and legitimate message. The same human rights that applied outside the lab applied inside of it. Our short-term goal has been increasing awareness about academic harassment among involved stakeholders, and also establishment of a platform where stakeholders and decision makers can collaborate in better addressing academic bullying. Our midterm goal is focused on empowering targets to protect themselves and fight back against perpetrators and their supporters. Empowering targets is an essential step to change the current dynamic of bullying signals, which is when reporting bullying and harassment goes nowhere, it sends positive signals to perpetrators that they will be protected and send negative signals to target that they have no recourse and should tolerate the situation. Our long-term goal is to develop discipline-specific guidelines on academic bullying and make every member of our scientific community an ally in addressing academic bullying. Our parity movement team consists of experts with different scientific backgrounds from various countries, which enable us to better understand academic bullying in various scientific disciplines and different countries. So far, our focus has been centered on increasing awareness about the unresolved issue of academic bullying. Our team published over 20 papers in journals with broad audiences. We also ran a global survey on academic bullying to better understand the root causes of bullying issues, which my colleague Dr. Sherry Moss will shortly talk about our main findings. Both Nature and Science magazines covered the main outcomes of this survey in their career articles. We have also provided informal advice to over 700 targets in various disciplines. Very recently, we also started a target story series where we cover anonymous target narratives that can be useful for many 
other targets to protect themselves and their families against bullying behaviors and its side effects. The main goal of our second annual conference is to receive insights from important stakeholders, including funding agencies and journal editors on building constructive and safe academic cultures. We first hear from Dr. Moss regarding the outcomes of our global study on academic bullying. Dr. Moss, the virtual stage is yours.